Pre-trial hearings in the case of the alleged mastermind behind the 9-11 attacks and his accomplices are set to begin at the U.S. Detention Center in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, on Monday. To talk more on this, we're now joined live by Andrea Prasso, Senior Counterterrorism Counsel at the Human Rights Watch. Andrea, among the key issues to be discussed at these hearings are the so-called CIA black sites, secretly operated U.S. prisons where the men were allegedly held. Could this affect the trial? You know, the, one of the issues that the defense have raised is that they want the CIA black sites preserved. They consider them to be scenes of crimes, which I do as well. The men were tortured there, and they think that that's relevant to the case. And I think they have a very strong argument. And additionally, an interesting factor is that the judge who's overseeing this case also preserved, in a very different case, the Abu Ghraib site under the same theory that evidence could be obtained from that prison. So I think we may see him order that these sites, wherever they may be, which has not been publicly confirmed by the U.S. government, but these sites need to be preserved. How much longer could, it, could the trials be stalled? Well, I don't think it will delay anything. I think the issue is to make sure that evidence is not destroyed. But the reality is that this trial is not going to happen anytime soon. There is a week of pretrial hearings taking place now. There's another week scheduled two weeks from now. And we are talking about months, if not years, before the actual trial begins. I guess a lot of people... Particularly, I'm also asking myself, why were these kind of prisons needed in the first place? I mean, why couldn't the subject just be interrogated in the U.S. system? Why have a designated area to bring these suspects where no one can get to them, not even the law can touch them at this point? Well, you've just hit on exactly the reason that they were created, because the law could not reach them. They were secret, illegal detention sites where people were tortured in violation of U.S. and international law. So there was never any reason for them. President Obama closed them. And the fact that these sites still exist, the defense has argued, just suggests there may be some evidence related to what happened to their clients there and that they don't want them destroyed until after the trial. What do you think is the significance of the locations of the prisons? Well, these is there any? Well, these secret prisons are, of course, outside the U.S. It's been publicly reported that there were secret prisons in Poland, in Thailand, in Lithuania, in other places. And what I think that shows is just how widespread the U.S. regime of kidnapping, rendition, and torture was. It wasn't just a case of the U.S. detaining people and torturing them. There was involvement and cooperation of governments throughout the world. Who works there? I mean, do, do they have local personnel, or is it just Americans, or is it military? Who actually, who's there to, to run the day-to-day -day basis of these prisons? Well, the, the secret prisons are no longer open. Even if they were open when President Obama took office, one of the first acts that, that he engaged in the first time he was inaugurated was to order that they be closed, and if anyone were there, that those people either be, the, the legal, real legal process be applied to them. So as far as we know, they don't exist in terms of being operated by the U.S. No one is there. No one is, is working there. But what the defense lawyers want is to make sure that these facilities aren't destroyed. Now, they were run by the Central Intelligence Agency, but it varies country to country whether the local security services or intelligence services were involved in their operation. In your article, you say that uh, there's a pattern of not holding officials accountable for authorizing torture. Should people be prosecuted for following orders, or should the blame go all the way to the top, really? Well, the blame absolutely should go all the way to the top and several layers down. The real concern in the U.S. is that no senior official has ever been held accountable. The only people who've been prosecuted for detainee abuse have been First of all, a very limited number of people, a handful of people, and always low-level people, never the senior officials who created the regime of torture and ordered it and authorized it and implemented it. So Human Rights Watch's own research suggests that there are sufficient grounds for a criminal investigation into the conduct of senior officials all the way to the top of, of former President George Bush and others. Have you yourself been to Guantanamo Bay? And what can you tell us about what it looks like if you have been to one of these secret camps. Give us an idea of what it looks like. Yes, I've, I've been to Guantanamo many times. Um, now, as a human rights observer, uh, sometimes there are tours of the camp, but, but human rights observers are not allowed to meet with the detainees. I have done so in, in previous positions. I used to represent detainees in Guantanamo. 
But when I travel now for Human Rights Watch, we are kept far from the prisoners. The only time we see the prisoners is when they appear in court, and then it's behind a thick glass wall. Uh, there's actually a, a time delay. So what the, when the prisoners and, and other trial participants speak, you can see them speak, but you can't actually hear it until 40 seconds later. And that's designed to allow the government to cut off the audio feed in case someone says something that the government believes to be classified. Andre Andrea Prosso, I've run out of time. You're the Senior Counterterrorism Counsel at Human Rights Watch. Thank you.